In one of the recent videos I already told how I tested the Rusak wheeled snow and swamp vehicle. Four axle, floating, on ultra low pressure tires, with a gross weight of 7 tons and a payload of 2 tons. This off-road vehicle was equipped with a cab and a 146 horsepower diesel engine from a serial i Vato light truck. Then the tests turned out to be winter. The snow was knee deep. And after that snow and swamp vehicle, the Russian company Com presented its second generation. Also with an 8x8 wheel formula, but already weighing 8 tons and with a load capacity of 2.5 tons. It was late autumn, and in the city of Bogorodsk, where these off-road vehicles are made, instead of deep snow, there was viscous mud underfoot. So, how does the wheeled snow and swamp vehicle of the second generation, which received the designation Rusik 3994, differ from its predecessor Rusik 3993? There are several such differences and they are very significant. The main among these differences is that if the previous snow and swamp vehicle was equipped with a classic diesel engine and transmission, the new Rusik received a hybrid power plant with a total capacity of 150 kilowatts. The power is really total, because the all-terrain vehicle has not one, but two three-cylinder engines, each of which is paired with its own generator and its own synchronous electric motor. What for? The fact is that this Rusik was made with an eye to use in the far north, where it is always very cold, deserted and often there is no connection. There is nowhere to wait for help and the failure of any important unit for the crew is often fatal. Therefore, the most important components and assemblies of the car decided to duplicate. One of the internal combustion engines is located in front under the hood, the second, in the rear of the body, under the trunk. Each of the two electric motors is located between its own pair of axles, along with a two-speed transfer case, of which this Rusak, of course, also has two. Another difference is the rejection of the scheme with all steered wheels in favor of steered wheels of only the first two axles. Such a solution, on the one hand, simplified and, therefore, reduced the cost of the chassis design, and on the other hand, increased directional stability when driving at medium and high speeds, which for Rusik can reach 60 kmh. Instead of a power steering, the all-terrain vehicle received an electric power steering. Instead of self-locking cross-axle differentials, mechanisms for their forced locking are installed, which allow transferring torque from wheel to wheel not partially, but completely. Wheel gears with external gears gave way to planetary wheel gears, which provided an increased gear ratio and made it possible to lower the center of gravity by more than 10 centimeters, which is important for stability when moving through water. The decrease in ground clearance is offset by a slight increase in the diameter of wide profile ultra low pressure tires. The Rusik 3994 suspension is kept completely independent, this increases the cross-country ability and average speed when driving off-road. Instead of a two-row all-metal cabin from Iveco Daily, the new Rusik received a completely original body in the entire length of the car. Very roomy, designed for 14 people. It is based on a strong steel frame, the outer side panels of which are made of lightweight aluminum, and the front and rear parts, roof, front doors, and internal panels are made of fiberglass. A heat insulating material 4 cm thick is placed between the outer and inner panels. A significant part of the Rusak design is manufactured by COM independently. We are talking not only about the original body. At the mechanical transmission plant, which is part of the COM company, transfer boxes, final drives and wheel reduction gears are produced for the Rusik Snow and Swamp vehicle. Elements of the steering mechanism and independent suspension are also of own design and production of the COM company. Now a little about my personal impressions of the Rusik Snow and Swamp vehicle, on which I traveled both as a passenger and as a driver. Even on a field with pits and bumps, this Rusik rides surprisingly smoothly, and this despite the lack of seat suspension. That's what a fully independent suspension with a well-chosen characteristic means. It takes a little getting used to driving the car. At first it seems that it needs to be caught every now and then, that it goes either to the right or to the left. Perhaps a slight delay in the reaction to steering actions affects here. But very soon everything becomes clear and familiar. You just begin to measure the responsiveness of the steering gear with the beginning of a change in the trajectory of movement. You quickly get used to the features of the Rusik control. You start to work the steering wheel correctly and already without much effort you drive it in the chosen direction. 
and the automation of transmission control due to the electric drive, as well as the inclusion of locks and switching transfer boxes with buttons to the left of the steering wheel, greatly facilitate control. On public roads, it should be borne in mind that the overall width of the all-terrain vehicle is 2.7 meters, therefore, when driving around with oncoming cars every now and then you have to move to the side as much as possible, sometimes leaving the right wheels to the side of the road. Off-road automatic transmission control helps a lot, thanks to the electric drive with its stepless change in torque. This time I didn't have the opportunity to check the patency of the car, but nevertheless we set the Rusik one very difficult task. Not far from the banks of the Oka River there was an impressive slope. Long, and most importantly, steep. I was sure that neither Rusik nor any other off-road car of similar mass was able to overcome it. But the Rusik coped with the task. Even without a preliminary run-up, it calmly went up and without slowing down, without the annoying rumble of engines, without wheel slips, on the first attempt drove to the top, as it seemed to me, to some surprise even the developers themselves. When we tested this Rusik with a hybrid power unit, the second copy of this Rusik was manufactured in the production workshops of the Con company, but with a conventional power unit and a classic transmission. This should simplify the design of the snow and swamp vehicle and significantly reduce its cost. When this copy is ready, I will come to Bogorodsk again to test it. By this time, it will snow there, and we will be able to test the snowmobile qualities of the Rusik. Stay tuned for my new videos.